Blessings and welcome to your program Shalom Shalom with your host Dr. Marisol Peltzer and Reverend Dexter Peltzer. Brother Dexter's not here today but I'm here with the Lord. Amen. And um, today's program is an amazing program. Today I'm going to be talking about how you matter to God and I'm going to be talking about some of the attributes of the Lord that teach us how we matter to him and the things that he is to us amen by talking about his characteristics and his attributes but before we begin i want to pray father in the name of jesus lord i thank you for your son for the holy spirit and for you father jehovah lord i just thank you for the trinity lord and i just surrender this program to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, take over. Father, and I pray that these words that I'm teaching today are anointed by you, that you anoint this message so that it blesses the people that are hearing it, Father. And we do it, Lord, for all your honor and your glory. And we just bless you. And we declare that you are the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. In Jesus' name, amen. But before I begin the teaching, I want to invite you to go to um, our YouTube channel. You go to YouTube and you type in shalomshalom.org and then you can subscribe to our channel. We have like 394 programs in English, Spanish, and Arabic that you can listen to and be blessed. Amen. And subscribe and send us your prayer requests, send us your... Um, your testimonies and your questions. Amen. God bless you. And I want to start um, with that idea that you matter to God. God loves you so much and he wants to meet you wherever you're at. And in order to, um, the scriptures demonstrate and show us how much he loves us. So let's go to Psalm 139. And let's read um, from verses 1 to 16. Amen. Praise God. O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. So the Lord knows each one of us individually because he searches us. He knows what is in our hearts and he knows us. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. So he knows when we wake up. He knows when we go to work. He knows what we're thinking. So he knows us well. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. You know who I am. You know how I believe. You know what my customs are. You know what I like, what I don't like. You're familiar with all my ways. God is an active God who is present in our lives. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. So before we pray, he knows what we're going to pray for. Amen. You hand me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. You have touched me. Amen. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. The Lord of Lords and the host of heaven, the almighty God, he knows us and he cares about us. Isn't that amazing? Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the death, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on a far side of the sea, even when your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. He's not a passive God. Look what it says. Your hand will guide me. You would lead me, amen, and your right hand will hold me fast. That means that we are safe and that he's always with us, amen. 
If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light might become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. You will keep me pure. The night would shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Amen. What a blessing. My frame was not hidden from you. Wow. When I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depth of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. So he knows us very intimately. How precious to me are, you, are your thoughts of God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand when I awake, I am still with you. When we awake, we're still with him. It's talking about a relationship that's very intimate with the Lord. Walking with him every day. That's what the Lord wants. And he has so many thoughts for us. So many wonderful plans for us. That he has ordained for us to do. And so many wonderful thoughts. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you. Plans to give you a hope and a future and not to harm you. What an amazing promise to you and me when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We need to learn to walk in that. And you know, as I was thinking about this teaching, I said, well, how can I show the dimensions of our relationship with God, who he is to us, and how much we matter to him? And I, it came to my mind, the names of God. Amen. The names of God, they're powerful. Um, they're, many of his names are mentioned in the Bible. And each one of them has a particular meaning, right? Um, so we need to study some of those names to understand the meaning of them and how they relate in our relationship with the Lord. Um, because the names and the titles of God describe the different aspects of his, his nature and his character, who he is, his personality. And I think that's important because he is our Lord, so we need to know what his nature is in order to understand who he is and how much we matter to him. Amen. And um, one of those names that I find amazing is the name Abba, which means Daddy, Papa, okay? And that name was first spoken by Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane before the night of his crucifixion. So Abba indicates an intimacy with God as a child to his father. So when we say Ava Father, that means we're his children, amen, and, and that he loves us, okay? Um, when we come in faith to Christ, we receive the spirit of sonship, and then we can approach God as our loving, forgiving Father. And that is so important that we understand that he's our daddy, that he's Abba, and that we matter to him. What father doesn't care about his children? A father protects, provides, gives guidance, guides, instructs his children, and that's our heavenly father. He wants to do all those things for us, amen, and we need to understand that. So I want to go to Romans 8, um, verses 14 and 15, amen. Glory to God that we have a dad, Abba, our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Romans 8, 14 and 15. Glory to God. Amen. It says, Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. So now we're sons, co-heirs with Christ. Amen? The Spirit himself testified with our spirits that we are God's children. Now, if we are God's children, then we are heirs. Amen. Heirs to his promises. Amen. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. What a blessing that he's our Ava, he's our daddy, and we're co-heirs with Christ. And now we have been fully adopted into the family of God. And we are now being protected by him under his wing, under his guidance, under his protection, being led by him, and all these wonderful things. And now we can stand on the promises because now we become children of the covenant. And we attain redemption through Christ Jesus. Amen. What a blessing. I mean, that makes me so excited. So excited. And then there's another name, okay? Adonai. Adonai, okay? And this means the Lord is master, which means he's an overseer and he's the judge and the ruler. And it, this name emphasizes God has the almighty ruler and the covenant keeper, okay? And which is amazing. So this name is, in, is used in place of Yahweh, which was taught by the Jews to be too sacred to be uttered by sinful men. So Adonai is from the Hebrew root meaning to rule. It refers to a sovereign controller, a lord, our master, our owner. So he is our master, and he is in charge of our lives. So our lives are no longer ours, but he, his. So now, so then, then we have to crucify ourselves, and every day become more like Christ, okay? And follow him and his ways, and be guided by him. Because if we done, then we're not children of his. And if you're not a children of God, you're not under his promises, amen? And then there's another name that, that demonstrates the love of the Lord. And it's, it means the mighty one of Jacob. And that name is Almighty God or El Shaddai. Amen. And this is a wonderful um, name because it speaks to God's ultimate and sovereign power over all. So if he's our daddy and he's El Shaddai and he has power over all, that means he is in total control of everything, okay? And it's very similar to the name Almighty, okay? The Lord God Almighty, the Lord God Omnipotent. He's never lost a battle. That's who our daddy is, the Lord of everything, the most omnipotent, the most powerful, powerful, the mighty one of Israel. And if he's the mighty one of Israel and he's our father and we matter to him, he protects us. And what better protection to be under the protection of the mighty one of Israel. Amen. As in Isaiah 124. So we matter to him. And that's why the scripture says to us, no weapon formed against me will prosper in the name of Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. So we need to understand that. And then another name is that shows that we matter to God. The scripture talks about him as our deliverer. He is our deliverer. Amen. 
And it's, a, it's a, one of the names that David used a lot, and I think it was one of his favorite names because of the number of times that God faithfully delivered David from his enemies, including King Saul, who many times tried to kill him. And, and we need to understand that, that he is our deliverer, and he will deliver us from our enemies. Amen? And he will protect us. Sometimes God may not choose to deliver us from all the dangers in life, but we need to understand that he has provided the ultimate deliverance through his son Christ Jesus, by whose sacrifice on the cross we are delivered from the ultimate danger, which is eternity in hell. Amen? Because of our sin. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, who should ever believe in him will have everlasting life. Amen? So he has delivered us from hell. And I, I, I want to go to the Psalms. I want to go to Psalms 18.2. So you can see, it's amazing um, how he delivers us, how he protects us on a daily basis. 18.2. Amen? I get so happy and I just rejoice. That I, so let me read this to you. It, look at what David says. I love you, O oh Lord, my strength. You know, he's our strength because we matter to him. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. He's our fortress. He's our rock. He's our deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Let's go to 4017. And, and, and the purpose of this teaching is to encourage you and to let you know that you matter to God. So if you need to be delivered, go to him and ask him to help you. Amen. And to deliver you from, from whatever you need to be delivered from. Sickness. Persecution. Amen. Let's go to 4017. Glory to God. Amen. Yet I am poor and needy. May the Lord think of me. You are my help and my deliverer. Oh my God, do not delay. He does not delay. He comes with the deliverance at the right time. Amen. What a blessing. Whatever your need is, he's there to deliver you, to provide for you that deliverance that you need because he cares for you. Let's go to 75. Amen. I get so blessed. Um, listen to this again. It says, I want to start in verse 1. It says, Hasten, O oh God, to save me. O oh Lord, come quickly to help me. Wow. That needs to be an attitude because he cares for us. Look at what verse 5 says. Yet I am poor and needy. Come quickly to me. O oh God, you are my help and my deliverer. He always delivers us. He's always there for us to bless us in the time of our need. Amen. Whatever that need is, and the most important need, which is the need of eternal life for salvation, he has provided through our, his son, Jesus Christ. For, because whoever believes in him is safe. And you know, this one is very interesting. The Lord Elroy, which... Um, the Lord, my shepherd, like in Psalm 23, 1, that says, the Lord is my shepherd, I should not want. So if he's our shepherd, we're not going to have wants. I shouldn't, we're not going to lack. He's always going to provide everything that we need emotionally, physically, that rescue, because we matter to him. 
And, and it's interesting, Eroi means the God of seeing, and we see this in Genesis 16, 13. Um, there was um, a lady named, you know, Sarah, and Sarah had a servant, and her name was Hagar. So Hagar called God by his name when the angel of the Lord appeared to her in the wilderness. Alone and desperate after being driven out by Sarah, the Lord assured her that he was aware of her plight and that he would make a, her unborn son, Ishmael, a great nation. So El Roy is not a distant and aloof God, but one who sees the needs of his people and hears our prayers and comes to our aid in times of trouble. It is an amazing, amazing story. And I want to go to Genesis 16, 1 to 14 and read that story to you. How the Lord cared for this woman who was a servant. Amen. Who was a servant. And how he told her, I'm here. I'm seeing your, your problem. Amen. Glory to God. 16, 1 to 14. Hagar and Ishmael. Okay? Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, had borne him no children. But she had an Egyptian maid servant named Hagar. So she said to Abraham, The Lord has kept me from having children. Go asleep with my maid servant. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to what Sarai said. So after Abram had been living in Canaan for 10 years, Sarai, his wife, took her Egyptian maid servant, Hagar, and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar, and she conceived. Okay? That's trouble, right? When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. So Hagar begins to despise her mistress. Then Sarah said to Abraham, You are responsible for the wrong. I'm suffering. I put my servant in your arms, and now she knows she's pregnant. She despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Your servant is in your hands, Abraham said. Do whatever you think best. Then Sarai mistreated Hagar, okay? After she asked her to be with her husband, then she mistreating her because she got jealous, right? And hate between her and, and Sarah, there was jealousy. So she fled from her. And let's look what happens. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will so increase your descendants that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, You are now with child and you will have a son. You shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard of your misery. The Lord has heard. He knows what's going on. He will be a wild donkey of, of a man, his hands, will be against everyone and everyone against him, and he will live in hostility towards all his brothers. She gave this name to the, to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me, Roy. For she says, I now seen the one who sees me. That is why the well was called Beer Lahat Roy, and is still there between Kadesh and Bered. So the Lord sees everything. 
everything that is happening in our lives and he's in control he gives her a promise that her son will be born and he will make her make her son Ishmael a great nation and the same way he was faithful to this slave he's faithful to us because we matter to him he sees everything he sees the injustices your problems your needs and he will deliver you because he is your daddy hallelujah he is your daddy you know and and he's an everlasting god he is a shepherd he is the god of our peace amen let's go to hebrew 13:20 okay Let's go there. I'm going to read this to you. It's amazing. Okay, listen to this. Hebrews 13, 20. Amen. The great shepherd of the sheep. Okay, he says, listen to this. Let's start with verse 18. Pray for us. We are sure that we have a clear conscience and desire to live honorably in every way. Particularly, urge you to pray so that I may be restored to you soon. This is it. He's talking to them. May the God of peace, who brought the blood of the eternal covenant, brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep. The great shepherd of the sheep. He's our shepherd. He's guarding over us. Equip you with everything good for doing his will. Amen. So God will equip us. He will protect us. He will shepherd us. He will guide us. He will lead us. He will provide. He will protect in, because he sees everything. And we are in his hands. And he's our Abba. Amen. And he, we matter to him. So we don't have to be afraid. And he's our provider too. So it is amazing. We don't have to walk in fear. We just have to choose to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And then we become children of God and heirs with Christ and his promises. And more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. So as we, I depart today, I want to say again, you matter to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, let that truth be in our hearts that you are our Papa, that you are our Abba, and that you are with us, and, you, and that you protect us, and that you guide us, and that you lead us, and that you provide, and that you are peace, and that you see everything, and that you have everything under control, Father. And we just thank you for that, and we just praise you, and we worship you. Amen. So remember, go to shalomshalom.org or go to my YouTube channel by typing in shalomshalom.org and see our programs. This has been your program Shalom Shalom with your host, Dr. Marisol Pulser. God bless you and see you next week. Blessings. Amen.